way, Dave. Go. Folks, welcome to the Get Off Our Lawn Show. I know it's been a bit. I am your host, Dave Jackson, my co-host down there in the great state of North Carolina, Mr. Dave Seymour. And I know, I know what you're saying, folks. Who do we have here on the camera? Who do we have? In front? We've got her locked down. We finally have her. The schedules have merged. We have her here, folks. Robin Marie yep. Brown Grodsky. We knew her as Robin. Of course, I knew her in high school as don't walk in front of her. That's how I knew her in high school. <laughs> we, we, oh we, we, we have her here. Robin, how are you? I'm I am fine as frog hair, as we say here in South Carolina. They do say that in South Carolina. Do they say that? We say a lot of things here in South Carolina. <clears throat> I would have thought it would involve peaches. Oh. Um, that's you, more in Georgia, I think, the peaches. Yeah. If you drive up 85, you will go through, uh, what is that? It's the peach capital of the South Carolina or whatever. And it's the one where the water tower has a peach on it. And Yes, I know what you're talking about. And there you go. We'll, we'll flash a picture of that, Dave, for you, because it's inappropriate. It's not, a fa- it's not a family show. I'm still navigating most places around here, and mm-hmm. I'm coming up on three years, but I pretty much just live on the lake and don't go much further. There you go. You don't go downtown? Pardon me? Don't go downtown? Downtown Salem? <laughs> <laughs> now, we don't even have a traffic light. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I was in I was in South Carolina for about a year and a half at Sumter at Shaw Air Force Base, and it was truly the land that time forgot down there. It is. It was crazy. I'm like, where am I? Great fishing, but it was a it was, other than the air base, it was just wow, way back in time. But yeah. Well, I'm in the very northwest tip of the state, lovingly known as the Golden Corner. Yep. Upper left. Yeah. Wow. I did not know that. I did not know that title. What makes yeah. it the golden corner? Yeah. What's so special? Um, I really don't know. That's uh, a little research that I need to do. All right. I will say that the people here are lovely. The area is incredible. Uh, I moved from a high, excuse me, the high desert to a temperate rainforest, which has been hell getting used to, but my hair looks really good. Yeah. The humidity <laughs> is up. Yeah. <laughs> so so robin i think you know the drill of our show so folks just just so you know just to back up a little bit our our, our ongoing theme is to talk to folks who graduated with in 1980 back up in dryden and upstate new york so we have again we have robin with us here today and robin you know the drill so we for the folks that do not know which is a lot i'm sure what happened to Robin after we left high school, after we took the diploma off the football field and moved on in life? Uh, what's what's Robin been up to? Give us give us a kind of a timeline. And again, you can put what you want or what you not want in it from that point on. Just get us caught up. Gotcha, gotcha. I um, hung out in the Ithaca area for a couple of years. My sister was getting married in Colorado. So I went to Colorado for her wedding, which was September the 18th. And I kept saying, what is that? And she said, that's what we call sun. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I was not accustomed to the beautiful bluebird skies. And Colorado has 300 days of sunshine a year or more. Yep. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was a big one. Um, When I first went out, I was at at about, I think I was about 8,000 feet. So coming from central New York, going to Colorado, I slept a lot. Um, one beer was like three in New York. So that was that was an advantage for a while. Oh, I see, because yeah. of the altitude. Yes. The altitude, yeah. Gosh. yeah. Um, what, year, what year did you go to Colorado? Let's see. I went there in 1982 for my sister's wedding. All right. I was there for a couple of months, drove back to New York with them, and mm-hmm. immediately went back to Colorado. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I moved around Colorado a bit when I first got there. I was a house mom for some college guys, which was crazy. Um, one of them was a musician, a trumpeter. He was in a band called The Fornicators. So, yeah, it was a lot of fun at my house. The Fornicators. 
Yeah. Um, I work for the DCPA, the Denver, uh, Denver Center for the Performing Arts. Um, got to meet a whole lot of cool and groovy people. I will say my very, very favorite of all was Mickey Rooney. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. I got, I got to give him a big old Mickey Rooney hug. And, you know, I've, I've lost a little bit of my stature, but I used to be 5'8", and I think Mickey was like 5'3", so... He enjoyed hugging 22-year-old Robin a lot. <laughs> I, can, I can see that. I can see that. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, that was kind of my beginning in Colorado. Okay. Nope. That was uh, a lot of fun for a while, young person. Um, lots of things to see in Colorado. Lots of beautiful hiking. Um, Lots of cultural things. I mean, we're talking back in 1982. A lot has changed since then. One of the reasons why we left. But um, What area of Colorado did you end up in? The last eight years, I was in Sedalia, which is north of Denver and south, excuse me, south of Denver and north of Colorado Springs. Okay. I met my first husband, or is that ex-husband? Whatever you want to do. Your first ex-husband? First ex-husband. My first (laughs) ex-husband. It could be a series. I don't know where this goes, right? I I, I love that. Um, Let's see. I met Paul. I was working for Colorado Visual Aids, and he was this little guy from the Boston area. Mm -hmm. I became a biker chick for a number of years, which was a great part of my life. Yes. How great? Um, Years great. Weeks great. How great. Oh, my gosh. Years great. I sold my Harley a couple of years before we moved to South Carolina, just Mm -hmm. because people in Colorado were trying to kill me every time I went out on it. But I would say that I was I was heavily involved with Hog Harley Owners Group for a number of years. I was an officer, et cetera. I would say probably a good solid 20 years. And, you know, I'm not talking about the one percenters. I'm talking about the good guys. And, you know, yeah. So you missed the Phil Bakke road trips before he started going around the country. Um, Yeah, much to my chagrin, Phil never came to Colorado when I was there. Right. That was 38 years, by the way. Um, I think he's been there at least a half a dozen times since. I was, Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, when we speak about it, he says, oh, there was a thing called work and this and that. But I'm going to throw him under the bus. There was a, a... few years in there when he wasn't working but you know my mother always told me if you can hear a man whine you're not pressing on the pillow hard enough so we just won't go there (laughs) (laughs) i'm gonna write that one down that's great that's right so what what did you learn to ride give me the whole riding thing um well you know back in the junior year of high school i skipped Uh school went to second dam with sue nickham Mm-hmm. I got on a motorcycle with a guy I didn't know well, and we crashed and burned. You remember that? Me with all my casts on and so on and so forth. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's funny that you say that. Oh, you that. We've got this uh, little um, thing here. Let's see here. Then oh. the portion. We've got this little oh, yeah. that came up here, right? We were doing some, uh, you know, pre-show uh, stuff, and we noticed that you had two casts on here. Yeah. Um, I the wrist re- and the ankle. Mm-hmm. I broke my right hand. I uh-huh. broke my left ankle in nine pieces compound fracture. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Um, this had to have been a few weeks after it because uh-huh. I had bandages on my right knee. Um, I've had three surgeries on my right knee because of that little accident. Oh, my gosh. Um, let's see. I bought my girlfriend Susan's 883 Sporty Low, bright yellow, from her in 2011. And I just, I got on the bike and just started riding. I was accustomed to having my butt on the back for a lot of years. So mm-hmm. you kind of know the feel and yeah, I can drive a stick and a car. So the clutch thing wasn't new. Right. Um, so I just started riding and in six months I was over riding my bike. It wasn't big enough for me. And I'm, you know, I'm riding with the big boys with the ultras and yeah, I, um, I did Sturgis. If you either go to Sturgis or you do Sturgis. Or do Sturgis. Right. Yeah. And I did Sturgis. Oh, uh, nice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, Harley was there and I sat on their switchback, which was a new bike. It was the biggest of the Dyna, big fat tires, had a 103, six up, so on and so forth. Uh -huh. And um, I got back to Colorado. I was working for Oceanic Exploration Company and my bosses owned the Valley floor going into Telluride, Colorado. Mm -hmm. The uh, city Wait, took- they owned, they owned the whole floor? The whole, what? Yeah. what? Um, <laughs> the Blues, very, very wealthy people. Yeah, I know it sounds crazy. <laughs> Um, they own the valley? The whole valley floor going into Telluride. Wow. All right. It's pretty incredible. Well, they wanted to develop it, and the city wanted to keep it pristine and gorgeous. So they were in a court battle for many, many years. They lost it through condemnation. And about a year later, my bosses came in, the head of HR, and my boss said, come into the conference room. And I'm like, well, shit, this doesn't feel very good. So we went in the conference room and they said, nothing personal. They handed me a severance check. I said, great working for you. Went and packed my office, left, cashed the check, went to the Harley dealership and <laughs> bought my bike, drove it out of the door, decided I was going to take a year off and um, ride. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So what year did you get married? Let's see. It'll be 11 years this October so. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we ran off to Key West and got on a boat and drank heavily and waited for the mm -hmm. sun to set and yeah. dolphins were swimming around and we went on the bow of the boat and got married. Nice. Wow. Let me go wow. back one. Maybe I missed it. How did you meet Lee? I was an officer at the Hog Club and okay. I was at the dealership doing a meet and greet procuring uh -huh. members. I was an officer. I was dating, this was January, I was dating a different guy at the time, uh -huh. and um, I always like to go away for my birthday, I like to go to the ocean, to someplace beautiful, mm -hmm. and this guy I was dating and I went away for my birthday, and he was not a good vacation fit, and we broke up on vacation in Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> rather wait, wait a second hold 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 the phone you broke up with a guy in jamaica while you were out there with him in jamaica right right wow okay yeah. uh, it was very interesting very very interesting last couple of days <laughs> wow All right so we didn't even want to sit next to each other on the plane back but um so that's february fast forward to march my hog chapter is doing a big bowling event with other local chapters. Uh -huh. My nephew Christopher was with me, and Chris has um, a great many special special needs, and uh, he is kind of my litmus test. How people treat him is yeah. kind yeah. of to me everything I need to know about you. Yep. So Lee bowled with us. I was single. Lee bowled with us. He was very nice. Um, I didn't have my own bike at the time. And the LOH Ladies of Harley Spring Opener was a couple weeks away. And he asked me if I would like to ride with him. He had just moved from Pennsylvania to uh, Colorado with Subaru of America. He was a director. Okay. Um, so I checked him out. He didn't drink or do drugs when he rode his bike, which is huge. And uh, we started riding together. He would meet me at the local breakfast bar and... I would leather up and I would take him touring all over Colorado. <laughs> no, that's wow. good. All right. all right. All right. Well, before we get into the school stuff and all the memories and things like that, what just real quick, what does an officer of the hogs do? Well, it all depends on what position you have. I was a photographer for a number of years. I was secretary for a number of years. Secretary kept the books, uh, inventory on all the patches, shirts, stuff. So it was like real, real. I mean, you were like doing real stuff. It wasn't like a, just a title title. You were actually doing real stuff. Oh, wow. Okay. Real yeah. stuff. I even went to uh, Milwaukee for hot training, Harley officers training. It was international. I love these acronyms. Oh, my God. It was, it was so much fun. I God, I forget where these guys were from, but they sang this song, um, I think it was called Alice, something about Alice lived next door. And it ends up with Alice, Alice, who the beef is Alice. And it was all done karaoke. They were all wearing kilts, had their faces painted blue. 
We had the best time. Okay. All right, so I know we got to get into some school stuff and, and debunk or unbunk some stuff that was said in stories. Okay. And well, let, let's start like this, Dave. So who did you hang around with, Robin, during your high school years? Um, you know, it changed throughout the years. In uh -huh. like seventh and eighth grade, a lot. Melanie Pozo, Penny Munson. Yep. Well, hey, who um, was that? Penny Munson, Melanie Penny, yep. Pozo. Um, let's see. Kitty hung out with Kitty quite a bit. Yep. Sue Nickham and I were very, very close. Um, mm -hmm. Mary Lynn Prindle. Of course, Matt. Yep. Um, let's see. Doras. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think. Dennis Blake, he was one of my neighbors. So I hung out with him and Jack and his siblings and Karen Twilliger Compton was also in my neighborhood, so I hung out with her. I mean, I didn't have a car, and I lived up on the hill. So, and that's like... Which, hill did, you, which hill did you live on? Ringwood Road. Oh, okay. I didn't yeah. realize you lived up on that direction. Yeah, so it was about three and a half miles up the hill, so... Mm -hmm. Now, so that means you were at Dryden School System for the entire time from K through 12? I started with Mrs. Farron in kindergarten. This is you and I were in the same morning or afternoon. I think I was morning. So we were in the same class together. You know, that's the only class picture I don't have is kindergarten. I have really? all the other ones. I do, do you have kindergarten? No, 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 no. no. Roy Abbey was in my class mm -hmm. in kindergarten because he shut my finger in the bathroom door and it turned black in the nail. <laughs> Who knows? It's just, you know, a couple of years ago. Oh, my God, we've been graduated 43 years. And that reminds me, we'll be starting on hopefully the 45th class reunion soon. Mm -hmm. Which Dave has never been to any of them. I, I went to the like the five. Did you really? Yep. Oh, okay. There was one in Lansing somewhere. Yep. Myers Point. Yep. Oh, Myers. Oh. I went to that one. Oh. I sit corrected. I have not been back since because, you know, we were up in Massachusetts and then down here and all over the place. So, well, I didn't go to the first one. I didn't know what happened. The fifth one I wasn't invited to. And then <laughs> I think it was the 10th that was also at Myers Point. And I was like, why the hell am I not getting invitations? Like, we don't know where you are. I'm like, well, somebody knows where the hell I am. Yeah. yeah. So Let's not have asked very much, right? Yeah. I, clear, clear. I crashed the 10 year reunion. So oh. I remember that. And then I think, boy, I know that Agnes and I planned either the 15th or 20th or 25th or one of them, you know, mm -hmm. and did one, Sandy's done a couple. I mean, it's kind of a, a joint thing Yeah. because I'm not right there, but I'm telling you, anybody who sees this, if you don't come to reunion, you are missing out on things. And I have been sworn not to discuss a lot of it. So if that gives you a hint, it's they're a lot of fun. <laughs> Why didn't no know the twenty the twentieth and twenty fifth and the thirtieth were a good were a good time. It was a good time. Yeah, they were, they, they were well done, well done and well organized. Yeah, well let's um let's back up to the twentieth class reunion and Laura's telling everybody how Hyde tried to drown her naked ass in the pool. Yeah, let's hear about that story. Yeah, okay. that, that is so untrue. I am here to defend my good name. We were indeed at the hotel, and there were indeed some naked people in the pool. Um, Doris, I don't even know how she got a towel. She had a towel around, and she's going, hey, I don't know if I should get in the pool. So I'm like, come on, Doris, you know, get your towel off, jump in the pool. So I get out of the pool. I'm nowhere near. She goes running, jumps in the pool, smacks her head on the side of the pool, and starts going down to the bottom. I do my rescue jump into the pool, grab her, bring it up, and I'm holding her and hugging her, and she's, like, trying to fight me and everything. And, yeah, she hit her head wow. really, really bad. Did she so, cut her head or just bang it up? No, she just banged it up good. And so it's not my fault. It's the nub. Let's see. I think it was eighth grade. Penny Munson and I chewed up a whole bunch of baby Tootsie Rolls and globbed them together as a turd and threw them in the pool in the deep end, of course. 
You this is kind of like Caddyshack then, right? Yes, yes. And now I thought we were the only ones who did it, but I've I've heard other stories that we were not the only ones who did the pool gate thing. And I'm shocked that we never, ever got caught. Oh, this was the Dryden High School where they had to close the pool. That was that. Yeah, story. that story. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was that was that time that we threw the tootsie, the tootsie roll in into the pool and caused it to close down and stuff. Which, let's see what. Oh, I want to talk about Howard Claflin a little bit. Oh, please, yeah, yeah. I loved him. He bailed my ass out so many times, and he never was my teacher. Hmm. But, um, he, um, I was a little bit of a rebel back in school. Just a no, little. no, I won't hear of that. No, <laughs> um, I won't abide that, Robin. Yeah, you know, there was a there was a little bit of shenanigans going on now and then, and he brought me into his class and had me sit in the back of the class and sleep it off, um, and never ratted me out. Never told my mom. Never told. Oh wow! Uber or anybody, yeah. <laughs> so God bless, God bless you, Howard Claflin. I learned the lessons. <laughs> well, so, since we're in that in that topic about teachers, was he like Dave and I have this question we like to ask about you know teachers that influenced you the more the, the most that you just thought highly of was obviously Mr. Claflin. Is there anybody else? Um, Miss Zelda Tettenbaum. I had her for senior English. Dave's doing the same thing. I'm a who who. Zelda Bond, a young woman. I think she was like 22, 23. I think she was there for one year. Um, if you ask Ronnie Jackson, he will absolutely remember her. He used to call her Miss Tease. Um, she was um, a very voluptuous young woman. Mm -hmm. um, Go to the reference material. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Have uh, to look at the yearbooks. Yeah. I have been trying to find her. I put a thing out on Facebook and everything because I want to tell her that she really, I would say, Mr. Farron was a huge influence. I have a lot of fabulous memories of him and um, the Hachibaba and the rock, scissors, paper thing, and taught me how to play horseshoes and uh, roller skate and all those lovely things. Um, Howard Claflin and then uh, Zelda Tettenbaum, Ms. Tettenbaum. Now what, now what, did she, what did she do for you? What? It was around Valentine's Day, and I had her seventh period. So it was like, get your shit, get out to the bus kind of thing. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. She asked me to stay after class, and I was like, you know, a little fidgety about it. Everybody left, and I was at her desk, and she handed me a Valentine's card. And she said, my sister sent me this card, and on the front of it, it went, you know, on about love and so on and so forth. And you open it up, and there was this great big pink condom, and it said, love carefully. And I'm like, I was really quite What grade was this? This was senior year. <laughs> wow. Why do I not know? Why do I, why do I not remember this chick? <laughs> Dave's digging. Dave's digging. Wait I don't a remember minute. this woman. Um, so I was wow. taken back by that. But the message was very clear to me. Mm -hmm. yep. so, yeah. So I had a lot of respect for her to come right out and say, Watch your P's and Q's, young lady. He's in there, Dave. Yeah. Right. Hang on. Well, I'll All right. we'll scan it in. But All right. uh, yeah. He's in I, there. I just don't remember. I, don't remember. I would love to know where she's at, what she's doing. Um, ran what's into your, what's uh, your first name? Zelda. 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 Pretty yeah. sure it's Zelda. I have all of my uh yearbooks here, guys. All of them. Yep. That's there impressive. Holy crap. Were you doing the research? Um, yes, and I have another gem here too. Oh, I wish I still had my oh, I had that one there. Years. I remember that. I had that my I had, mine finally just crapped out. I wore it a lot. I wore that thing out. Well, um, I I put it on this morning and <laughs> decided that I wasn't gonna wear it. <laughs> Wouldn't be appropriate for a daytime show. I'm a certified scuba diver. Oh, I didn't know that. All right. I'm a lake pirate here on Lake Kiwi, which people are kind of getting used to. I love to dress up. That's one of the big things that I have done in my years. Backing up senior year, I won a sewing award. I got okay. by sewing. Oh. Miss Lennon turned me on to it. 
I lived in Colorado, one of my neighbors had a whole sewing room and I went to her house yep. and then went into her sewing room and she was doing all these cool things. And you can't see here, we're in my sewing room. I have one, two, three. Well, four. I can see a couple of quilts on the wall behind you. It looks like yeah. a patchwork on the, and then something over on the table. Yeah, yeah, I'm messing with a whole bunch of things, but I have four mm -hmm. sewing machines, a serger, so on and so forth. So I typically, I make a lot of costumes. Um, I make what I call cuddle quilts. I don't usually make full bed quilts. People have their bedroom colors design already together. Yeah. So the cuddle quilts are about twin size and I mm -hmm. back them with a very soft, minky, cuddly material. And they're just, you know, for people to throw on and cuddle up with. The first one I made was for Steve Madigan. And um, he got that the day before he started his chemo. Yep. Um, made one for Sandy Abbey, for my three grandnieces, for a couple of cousins who found me on Ancestry DNA, which has been totally cool. I've helped three people find their families through Ancestry DNA. So oh, that's nice. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, let's see. Significant life changing moments. I well, hey, hang on, hold that thought. What, what got you into sewing? What, when did that start? Doing the whole embroidery. <laughs> did you do it in school? Me, did you do it in school with Miss Swift? In the sewing class that she had? Yep, I did Miss Swift and Miss Lennon survival uh -huh. sewing, and then I actually uh -huh. did sewed patterns, bikinis, a couple dresses, jumpsuits, so on and so forth. Uh -huh. And then when I was in Colorado and I lived in King Ranch, where Lee and I had our first home together. As I went to my girlfriend's house and saw all the cool stuff she was doing, the bug bit me again, and mm -hmm. I've just been running with it. There you um, go. So, yeah. It yeah. travels well. Yeah, I've done some pretty neat stuff. When it's rainy or crappy weather here, it's typically what I do. Yep. So, um, my husband and I are big parrot heads. If you don't know what that is, it started out with Jimmy Buffett, Buffett. fans, but that is a little of that these days. It's more trop rock and things like that. We uh, have a lot of musician friends. What did you call it? Trop rock? Tropical rock. Okay. We call it yacht rock here in Raleigh. Yeah, it sounds kind of yacht rocky. Anything with Michael McDonald. Michael McDonald, yeah. <laughs> we just had a big flotilla here on Lake Kiwi with uh, Jesse Rice. Um, at one time, we had 27 boats. We had about 130 people. Uh, most people yes. don't you know a lot of people think that parrot heads we just sit around listening to Jimmy Buffett music and drinking margaritas and while that is a healthy part of it our mission statement is to leave our community better than which we found it yeah. there you go I like that that's nice that's good in Colorado um, we had five acres a big yard and we were very involved in the Colorado parrot head club and we used to do the party with a purpose at our house mm -hmm. which our big charity event. The last one we held there, we raised sixteen thousand dollars in cash. Wow! Um, mm -hmm, a trailer full of people, dog, and cat food, and our charity of choice there was TLC Meals on Wheels. Mm -hmm. so, well, it's funny you should talk about that. So I've got my little questions for Robin list here about the nonprofits and charities you've been involved with. Just kind of like list them off if you could. Um, well, in Colorado, it started probably with the Hog Group. I did volunteering at Children's Hospital. We um, sponsored a pizza night once a month where we would, somebody would give us $500. We'd order pizza, have sodas, little Harley things, and we'd go and just give pizza to anybody and everybody who wanted it. Families, kids, the workers, uh -huh. things like that. We also sponsored a coffee cart there, which gave free coffee, tea, and so on and so forth. Um, I'm sure you know about Children's Hospital and the, the beautiful things that they do mm -hmm. and the support that not only the children need, but the parents themselves and the workers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's the thing that affected me the most was, you know, the first few times I had all I could do to get my tears in the bathroom so no yeah. one would see them. Um, it was the faces of the parents that bothered me the most after a while, knowing that their child may or may not come home. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, um, that That's was a hard a profession too, you know, yeah. for the nurses and the workers. 
Yes, yes. Yeah, so, very honorable profession. Mm -hmm. uh, Children's Hospital and then with the Parrot Head Club, we got very involved with uh, TLC Meals on Wheels. My husband's company that he worked for, Subaru of America, supports uh, Meals on Wheels and several other wonderful charities. And so then the Parrot Head Club, we adopted TLC Meals on Wheels and we would go and uh, specifically deliver meals in December where we could shovel people's walkways. Um, I got to tell you, Robin, that's pretty freaking awesome. That's yeah. great. I, I love that. That is really great. You know, volunteering really does something for my heart and my mood. So yeah. that's yeah. the big one. Yeah. Um, when Lee and I moved here almost three years ago, we looked for a parrot head club and there wasn't one in the local vicinity. So we founded Flock of the Tri Lakes Parrot Head Club on March 17th, which was just two years. Our charity of choice is the Golden Corner Food Pantry. Uh -huh. We just um, did a check presentation for $1,300. This year, we have already given them $3,500. And our flock has over 1,000 volunteer hours. I go every Tuesday oh, and wow. volunteer. Yep. Um, that's a lot of work. You get to see a whole lot of different people. Yep. Typically, we service about 60 families on average. And when I say 60 families, I'm not talking one or two people. We have families of seven to 11 at times, typically yep. they're one to five, but we do get those great big families in. And the food pantry that I volunteer at is end of the month, end of uh, make ends meet food pantry. You don't come in and get a month worth of groceries. It's one week. Right. Um, it's, it's pretty significant. We did a lot of vetting of charities because there's nothing that pisses me off that when I donate and seven cents of my dollar actually goes to helping the people that I'm yeah. to help. Yeah. Yep. So our charity over 98 cents per dollar goes directly to. That's a great percentage. Yeah. That's great. That is great. Nice. Um, I also belong to folks, friends of Lake Kiwi society. And what that means is, I pick up garbage all around my beautiful lake because litter is a thing here. Thing. It's a cultural thing here. Yep. Um, throw garbage out all over the it's, place. It's a cultural thing with our country. It it's, it's bad. Really, but big yeah. um, So we do that. Plus mm -hmm. our parrot head club has a two mile adopt the highway that we pick up garbage on at least once a quarter. And we found some pretty wild things. Yep. Well, pick up garbage uh some of the better things are we found two twenty dollar bills <laughs> so uh, yeah so a lot of fun around here <clears throat> mm -hmm. great friends and how do you uh how do you hook up with these guys or do you say i've got an organization we've got so many attendees if you could make us a stop well it oh my gosh it happened a number of years ago, John Frenzy put out on Facebook that he was he wanted to do a house concert. And I had no idea who the hell John Frenzy was. And I don't know if Lee did or not. And it was the day before his birthday. And okay. he said, sure, come on out. We'll we'll do it. We'll put you up. We'll feed you whatever. We had 35 people at our house concert. We charged $20 a head. Okay. And he just came out and played. Well, the following year, we mm -hmm. thought, well, let's do a party with a purpose and have John and raise money for our charity. We have raffles and silent auctions and so on and so forth. Right. So he came to play our party with a purpose. And I think we had like 50, 60 people there. And all of a sudden, one of my friends says, that's Tom Shepard. And I'm like, who the hell is Tom Shepard? I had no idea. Right, right. Tom was in town at Red Rocks listening. Uh, he went to the Lyle Lovett concert. He's friends with Lyle Lovett. Okay. And John said, well, come on up to the grad skis. So he did. Uh -huh. so we knew John. We met Tom. Tom's married to Colleen McCabe Shepherd. So we met her. Um, we've been to Meeting of the Minds in Key West a number of times. And musicians, when you treat them well, yep. other musicians that you treat them well. Yep. And when you sell 200 tickets to a house party at $20 a head, Yep. To be new musicians, that's a pretty good take. Yep. Yeah. Dave, throw, Dave, throw up some pictures, man. 
All right, so we got a couple of things here. So uh, let's, let's start with uh, let's start with this here. I'm gonna see if I can make my screen a little bigger here. So let's talk about your high school prophecy. Okay, uh, be a trucker down south or a fashion model. <laughs> How did that work out for you? Well, I wasn't a trucker. Um, I wasn't a fashion model, but I modeled on trucks. <laughs> <laughs> so you, uh, you, you, you don't you have that photo. Kind of commingled the prophecy there a little bit. <laughs> Do you have that one? Which part? The the photo of me modeling on the truck. No, I don't you have, have it. Yeah. Feel free to throw it our way. Feel free to share it. Oh, let's see. All right. So, can you name the people in that picture? I'm sorry. Say that again. Can you name the people in that picture that Dave has up there? I think this looks like a homeroom picture from the. Yeah, thing. it's a homeroom picture. Probably, but here's the on the truck. <laughs> oh my gosh! There we go. Yeah, that was '80s big hair. '80s big hair. Big hair. And where were you living at the time? Colorado. I moved to Colorado when I was 20. All right. I have two bonus sons, Brandon and. Mm -hmm. them. Uh, I just met my daughter-in-law a couple of weeks ago. Um, Brandon was estranged from the family for about seven years. And during that time, he got married. And he married a woman with a boy. Uh -huh. So I have um, a double bonus grandson named Chase. He's lovely. They were just here. I have three incredible grandnieces that I am crazy gaga over. Mm -hmm. They were just here for Camp Kiwi. They're seven, five, and two and a half. So, and I am the favorite auntie, of course. Of course. <clears throat> of course you are. So yeah. let's, let's go over here for one second. Now, we had this picture here we pulled off of Facebook somewhere. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tell me a story about this picture. Um, let's see. We, oh, I can't remember the restaurant. This one, I was just home last time. I'm preparing to go to New York in a, in a couple of weeks again, too. Yep. Um, that's me, my mom, Dana, Agnes and Sandy. We all went out to breakfast and there was a snowman fence post there and uh -huh. Agnes made Dana sit on it. Now who's Dana then? Is that? Dana is Agnes's beautiful pretty girl daughter. Oh, okay. All right. How do you how do you not see that, Dave? No, well, I was I was trying to remember what sorry for forgetting Agnes's daughter's name. No, I mean the look. I mean, just look at well, I suppose. Yeah. I suppose. Yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah. She's spitting the image, pretty much spitting the image of Agnes when Agnes yeah. Is that age. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. So, All right. How's okay. your mom? How's your mom doing? My mom is doing great. Uh, she'll be 92 in November. Still lives mm -hmm. by herself with her kitty, and you know, doing great. I go back at least every three months. Yeah. Oh, look at this! Now, this yeah. one looks like uh, down at Doris's uh, one of Doris's walks, or is that not? Yeah, that was last year's um, Walk a Mile in Her Shoes. That's yep. Phil's auntie there, me and Doris. And let me tell you what a great cause that is. And yes. what a fun time we had this past year with Matt and David and, you know, Rini and Phil. And, oh, my God, it was a kick-ass. You guys got to come. It is on the list. It just didn't work out. We were having the the weddings and the there's a lot going on babies and all kinds of things this spring, and so it would have been a lot. But yeah. yes, we were looking for we were looking forward to that. Yeah, and I I inherited David's kinky boots. <laughs> did you really? I did. I did. He left them in I think Phil's room, and I went down there, and I'm like, I got to try these on, and they fit perfectly oh my gosh so, and they were broken in yeah they were already broken in oh my god he was a riot and tabitha his friend she was wonderful guys we did we had a wonderful time it was it was great and just about Good. hours from me and now, when Doris goes to visit her mama she stops in at my place which is about 12 hours in yep so i'm a i'm a good go between and phil's about three three and a half hours over the hill from me didn't you, didn't you, first my memory here, going back to high school, didn't you work at the Lion's Den? I worked at the Lion's Den um, with Agnes and Steve. Oh, I think there's a picture of that too, isn't there, Dave? I think I got a picture of one yeah, of them's the Lion's Den picture. Yeah. I, I think this is it. 
Dave Where there, you cut out a portion here. No, I did. I did. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. And there's got to be. Now, I never really, Dave, I never really dove into this, but there's got to be some Lion's Den stories. Lion's Den stories. What was well, happening behind the counter? Yeah, what the, <laughs> behind the scenes of the den? <laughs> well, um, I will say that the, my most vivid memory of the Lion's Den was. I had just gotten my braces on. It was senior year. And, you know, we had those big metal mouth. I mean, your lips just yeah, yeah. for the first month. Yep. But I'll never forget Ricky Young comes busting out of C-13. And he was always kind of a little shit, you know, Diamond yep. Young's little brother. Yep. <laughs> and I thought he was much younger than he was. He leaps over the counter, grabs my shirt, pulls me over, and he says, let's get locked together forever. And kissed me so hard, I swear to God, my lips bled from the braces. But that's my big memory. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, we should move towards, uh, you yeah. know, maybe we could ask the, the one of the questions, which is, Robin, you know, looking back now, what kind of advice would you give to your high school self after having been mm -hmm. apart from high school for 40 some odd years now? Well, the first thing I would absolutely wring my neck about smoking cigarettes. I started smoking cigarettes when I was 13 years old. I smoked them for 21 years. Um, I was trying to think what other things that I need to clear my name from here. I didn't. Well, Dave, Dave came up with a question today. We were talking a little early before we got you on. Dave came up with a great question. Oh dear. It was Dave and Pam. Um, how do you, what, uh, Dave, how'd you phrase it? How do you, how do you feel about getting I, older? about you know yeah, how do you, how do you, there was just something that we were, i was reflecting on recently um having had a number of people pass um uh, you know as as to how you felt about getting older these days well i'm glad you said older because i will never be old that's right that's um right. the thing that really pisses me off is my hair has gotten darker as i've gotten older instead uh -huh. of lighter so only John Eric and I know really what color my hair is. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, that, and of course I wear hearing aids now, but um, that was, I kind of helped that hearing loss along a lot. Um, going to concerts, standing in front of speakers. Yeah, motorcycles. Yeah, riding Harleys for years without any ear protection. So yeah, I'm very much an animal person. Uh, when I lived in Colorado, I used to hang out at the Colorado Wolf and Wildlife Center mm -hmm. and realized that my connection to wolves was much deeper than I ever thought. I don't know if you remember, I always howled. I've always howled my whole life, always howled. I remember seeing yeah. pictures all I buy on Facebook with you with wolves in different scenarios. Yes, yeah. yes. So um, okay. as you said, um, I had a very small circle in high school Mm -hmm. And I wished that I had branched out more to get to know people better. That was another thing that I would oh. do. I was wondering, what were you talking about that once? I don't remember when the conversation was. Maybe it was at a reunion. that You talked about that once. You wished, oh, I know it was. You and I had the conversation when we were at Mrs. Edmonds' funeral about how we wish we'd known more people mm -hmm. back in the day. Yep. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. No, I agree, I agree with that. I absolutely agree with that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot of missed opportunities there. Yeah. And I often think about Don Alexander and his gang that they yeah. always used to go snowmobiling together. And I yeah. just love to go snowmobiling. Yeah. You know, thinking back, boy, I, I would have loved to have been a part of that group and, and done yeah. those cool things. And I wasn't a skier, so I didn't do the Greek peak thing. Yep. Um, geez. All right, dear. Well, unless you got anything for us that you can um, think of. I mean, you know pretty much everything there is to know about us at this stage of life, I guess. Yep. I'm assuming. Yeah, you know, I guess so. I told Doris that we need to do, you know, like some group kind of stuff. Like yeah. I was going to call her up and tell her, guess what, Doris, but we'll make it a surprise. I'm, mom's the word. I'm not going to tell All right. her. All right. So, well, I, am, you guys. I am so grateful we finally got you in I front of the camera. Up here. Yep. Yeah. This has been great, dear. Yep. Thank you very much for chatting. Yes. Absolutely. You know, we'll have to do this again in 10 years. <laughs> yeah, um, we'll make it work. Well, thank you again, dear Robin. It's been great talking to you. Thank you, guys. Nice seeing you. Like, yep. So, I got it. Very good. Good. Thank, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.